Goodly King Habeas peered from his throne. Scanning room wise, he felt low alone. And cried to the upper crust ceiling. Spewing laments in low throttle tones. Where's my court of curtly crones? The lepers and leapers and other feckless drones. Usually, they are assembled here. With mirthy tidings and fallow good wishes. Serving bad recipes on chipped, dirty dishes. Their lips do quiver. And their mouths fill with spittle. They curse and they fiddle. They carve, doodle, and whittle. They speak with fake lisps and dawdle and sway. Full of compliance, they howl, spray, and bay. Normally, they are assembled in undulating lines. So callous, so craven, so praising, so blind. They stammer and stutter. They bow and they shiver. They bloviate and placate. They lurch and they whisper. They pause and they postulate. They harangue and they dither. In the westerly nook of Castle Argyle, the nosy chancellor gathers a milk smile and perchance pursues a bottomless vial of peas porridge hot molten exiles. In the idle woods of Eiderdown, a pauper praised his ponce and purse and braised the simpleton's miserly frown and traded each verse for a curse. The king heard the dalliance alliance. Abrupt, he did foreplay his hand, accursed and averse to the hangman's obtuse. He parlayed the parlance, meekishly bland. In all, brandy veil vestibule. A temperamental tempest did prowl. As the north wind's heady lament. Cemented the plowman's awl and scowl. Upon a signpost, with much merriment. To oblong onlookers. With written regards they spent unsent. Lone Isabel, that lass unfettered. She roams the north country airs. In search of a prince unpampered, unlettered in hopes of sharing the season's last pair, exchanging each sneer for a care, finally realizing there was never really anything there.